Henry, um, Norwich back in the Premier League. What did you make of last season? How much did you see of it and uh, our championship success? I, I watched, obviously, on television. I've got relatives from, um, from you know, who live in Norwich, who are passionate about the team, who keep me regularly updated. I think it's fantastic you're coming back up. The, I went down to the training ground, obviously got tested, socially distanced, and I just saw that I, mean, I went to see Max Aarons to do a piece with him in January, February time. Um, I'm really, obviously, very impressed with him. But you know what, the training ground, Connie, it's mm. just, you guys know it better than me, but I hadn't been there for a bit, but it's been transformed. Yeah. It's magical, I mean, yeah. It was a collection of porter cabins when I went there before with some nice pitches um, attached. But now it's a proper professional Premier League setup. And fair play to to Delia and Michael and to Stuart and and, and Daniel Fox as well for, for for putting that into place. And I'm, I'm sure there was a frustration amongst some fans that it wasn't invested in the team more. But you look at that. So if you're a player coming to Norwich now... You look at that training ground, you think, I'm going to develop here. You, you know, you talk to the manager, you talk to Stuart Webber, you think, wow, this is this is a club that's going places. And I, I went into the, the canteen at, at one point just to get a coffee or something. And I just looked around. I thought, wow, some serious players. I mean, you know, Todd Cantwell. Was it, what do you call him? The Deerham Deco? Yeah. <laughs> He was there and he was, you know, I just thought, wow, there's some, there's some talent here. And I know Ben Gibson from, from way back, I've done a couple of pieces with him down the years. And obviously, he was, I think he got injured in March time, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So he was, out, he was out for a bit. And that, he'll be a huge player for you next season because of his experience, because of his, because of his personality, as well as his sort of defensive um, skills as well. Um, he'll be a leader in the dressing, very, very driven, impressive character. Um, so, yeah, just, just that trip there, um, even though I didn't get to a game at Carrow Road, just the trip down to the training ground just sort of impressed me in terms of the, uh, the quality you've got there. But it wasn't simply the quality of the individuals. There was something in the air. There yeah. were, well, it was slightly a bit of builder's dust because they were, you know, the dudes <laughs> but, but Stuart was showing me this, this new machine that you've got coming in which, with yeah. the lights flash off on the wall. Yeah. I think you got from RB Leipzig or something, and it was like three quarters of a million quid. And... The, but something like that, players will go in there and look at that and go, wow, this is a pretty sophisticated, high-level operation. So uh, uh, the little old Norwich tags don't work anymore. No. I was going to say, was gonna say like, did, did you feel like the, the mentality was different? Now? Obviously, it's, they're all on and up with Premier League, um, kind of was beckoning at the point you came there. But I felt like two years ago, we felt like it was almost a bit of a lottery win. And we felt like, you know, we're lucky to be here. I, I was wondering if you felt like the mentality was different, whereas... This time we're ready to kind of really make our mark on on kind of making the next step up. You can't be complete lottery winners if you, if you've got <laughs> got deserved promotion. I can remember your first game. I was at Anfield. I think it was a yeah. Friday night before the season. Only the Premier League season could start before the season, and um, you getting absolutely thumped. I mean, I think you were four nil down or whatever, but you kept playing. I think you pulled the goal back, and I yeah. I just thought that was the first time I'd sort of seen you properly under under Daniel Farker and I just thought wow that is that shows some balls that to keep <laughs> sticking with the principles and what have you and that's why I thought that the Billy Gilmore move just you know so many people wanted to sign him not simply because of the game he had against England but because anyone who saw him at Chelsea glimpses of him whether he came off the bench or one or two starts you know or you just talk to people around the club you know that this is a very special young player and i just thought wow billy gilmore he really you know when i heard the stories of him being linked with norris i was like that just makes so much sense yeah for chelsea in terms of his development because he's going to play for obviously for his own development and norwich will have a you know a, a special player for a year i think it's unfortunate you couldn't hold on to oliver skip but i assume that was a that was a non-starter because he's i think he's been excellent for you and you could just see there would have been a nice blend there i still think you need a bit strengthening in midfield but you know i do read a lot um about you know what fans say we need a bit more of a physical presence in the field and obviously you, you, know, you guys will know better than me and I know you're being linked with with billing at Bournemouth and I can understand that particularly as he gives us a slightly more aerial presence as well but Billy Gilmore oh he's tough mm. I mean he is you know Scotland have had a long tradition of bringing through tough small characters so you know just don't don't be assumed that just because he's short he can be pushed around he's as tough as anything 
And the great thing about him is that whatever the, the situation, even if you're getting battered, he'll want the ball. He'll take it under pressure. He'll, if he's got three, what's your first game? Liverpool. Nice. You know, well, <laughs> then Man City. <laughs> then Man City. And then was it Leicester home, Arsenal away? Yeah, it's awful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, points. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's not a fixture. That's, that's like an assault course. But that won't scare um, Billy Gilmore. He will. He'll love all that. He'll. He'll love those games, um, and he will keep demanding the ball, even if you fall one down. And I just think that is a. Yeah, well, I don't think you will be fall one down. I think you'll do better than than the previous time. I like. I like your recruits. I can. I can see. It. I still think you're still looking for a centre back, are you? Yeah, we're probably so, looking for a couple of Ayer, midfielders yeah. and a winger as well. I'd imagine, but yeah, Ayer seems to be the name on everyone's lips at the minute. But you know, I mean, I, I don't know too much of. Um, Rashid, I know he's obviously Kosovo and like covered England, Kosovo. Um, but you look at he, his end of the, the season was he at Bremen. I think got sort of three goals in seven games. Um, I think he's a you know he's 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 quick and will add to it. You know, and and fair play to the club. I mean, I was, I was looking at the, your your buys and obviously some are loans which have been found. But I mean, you know, it's five million Angus Gunn, it's six million for journalists, eight yeah. for Ben Gibson. Was it eight plus for Rashika? You know, you're not going splashing out huge sums. Um, that's probably covered by uh, the Buendia fee. To uh, I mean, I, I will miss him. Obviously, I'll watch him at Villa. But I just thought he was. Uh, did he get Championship Player of the Season in the end? So yes, he, he did. He probably, He's. Uh, I, I thought he was. He was fantastic. And obviously, he lost Skip as well. So that's uh, that's disappointing. But mm. you know, if you keep Aaron's and Campbell. And you've got Billy Gilmore coming in. You've, you have a fit Ben Gibson. Rashika could go there. You've got Angus Gunn. You've still got Tim Krull, haven't you? Yeah. You've got, you've got two good goalkeepers there. So, um, yeah. But, but you know, it is a, it's a squad game. You need to strengthen your squad because it's going to be a hard season. The step of, up. Um, sorry, Jack. What do you think of, um, like, Stuart Webber, Henry? Because, like Larry was saying off camera, and as, as every Norwich fan knows, he's probably one of the most honest people in football. Like, in terms of the Buendia thing, we probably knew it was coming because he said, like, there is, if there's money, if there's a certain amount of money there, we will sell. Do, do you think that refreshment is nice? And how far do you think he can go in terms of the football ladder? Yeah, I don't think I'm talking out of school here. But when I went to see Max Aarons, Stuart came in and sat down and and he was, he was pretty open about the fact that this is Norwich's model and you shouldn't be ashamed of it. Um, you, know, you look at Leicester, probably the best run club in the in the Premier League. They bring players in, you know, Canty, Mara, players like that. And then they have fantastic seasons, both winning titles, and then they move on. Um, and, the, and the club reinvests. And, you know, because Stuart Webber's just, I, mean, I have to say, you know, Losing Emmy Buendia was a huge loss. Your biggest loss would be to lose Stuart Webber yeah. and obviously the manager. I think the manager's fantastic. Um, and I like the football and I like his personality and I like everything about it. But I, I am Stuart Webber must be approached by bigger clubs um, because of his success in the transfer. But you know what? He showed me around the, the, the training ground and he was kind of king of all he surveys. I mean, that's... <laughs> maybe not quite as sort of entitled as that, but this was his fiefdom and this was his project. And he would took great pride, the fact that porter cabins were disappearing and bricks and mortar were going up and the foundations were going in for Norwich for the next sort of 10 or so years. And also with the players that he's brought in. I mean, you look at all those, you know, the five major people you bought in or loans. I mean, you, you just got to go, that's good business. You know, you're not... Who was that striker you bought in? Rip Van Winkle. Who was he? <laughs> oh, Van Wolfswinkle, yeah. Van Wolfswinkle, sorry. That's that's a bit weird. But, I mean, you spent a lot of money on him, didn't you? And he was yeah. and he was poor. So, look, for a club like Norwich, recruitment is even more key. Yeah. But the other thing I like, I like about Norwich uh, is, you know, homegrown. You yeah. know, you bring players. And you just... And you think that you know everyone sort of tries to recruit in their surrounding areas, which you obviously do, and then a little bit further away. I think Max Aaron's is London, isn't he? Luton, I think. Yeah, yeah. London, Luton, yeah. 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 Um, but you know, when you look at a lot of your, you know, the trying to recruit on your doorstep, I mean, you know, you've got the North Sea, you know, so slightly gets <laughs> so you're having to, to work elsewhere. But you but I think 
you know, if you are a parent of a promising kid in the south of England, you'd want your child to go to Norwich. A, because of the sort of, you know, the pastoral care, you know, they look after people. I mean, Max, you know, I, spoke, I think he's, he's, what, he's 21, 22? I spoke to him. I just thought, what a grounded, you know, what a great compliment to him and his own personality, to his family, but also to the club, because they brought up a really good individual. I mean, I'm, what, 30-odd years older than him? And we just, I just had a, you know, had a really nice, mature, well, mature by my standards, conversation with him. And I thought, what an intelligent, likeable individual. Just little things that you notice with, with, with players. When they leave the room, he just, he put his chair back under the table. He took his water bottle away with him. He left it as the room was when he came in. And I know they try to teach that at academies. Um, and I know there is a, has been a sort of perception of too much too young. But actually, I don't find that with the Norwich kids. I find them sort of, you know, particularly with Max. Um, so, yeah, there's a good culture at the place. But, yeah. you know, everything comes down to results. So, you know, if you've got one point after those four games, then people can say, well, you know, it doesn't matter how many porter cabins we change. But you know what? Long term, and the other thing I have to say about Norwich, and I thought it was fantastic when you got promotion and Delia poked her head out the window and <laughs> sing song. You know, you do have two very special people there, in Delia Smith and Michael and Jones. They are they're good people, they're passionate about the club. And given that we the sport is still slightly reeling from the antics of you know the big six and the um and the super league you know just cherish your owners yeah i say this a lot to, to norwich fans whenever i write about delia and michael and i've interviewed them a couple of times down the years and they're, they're just they're so good i know their pockets aren't the deepest but their hearts are mm -hmm. and they employ well you know the coach Stuart weber i mean you know, they brought they brought weber in. i know there are other people on the board as well but you know, and they are, if you talk to, you know, apart from Leicester City fans who love their own, and maybe one or two other clubs, but, you know, when you go to Manchester United, you know, your owners will be able to sit in the director's box and will probably be applauded by Manchester United fans around when the Glazers will be 3,000 miles away hiding. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's very important to have people there that are accountable. And um, I'm glad you said that, Henry, because I do think, Certain sections of the Norwich fans do take Delia and Michael for granted and do wish that they had deep pockets. But um, no, I prefer them to care for, for my money. Jacob, I know you feel the same. Um, I think it's the, the same, mate. Sorry, just before yeah, you go on. on to the next point. I think like you're saying, Henry, like um, even when Billy Gilmore came to the club, um, for example, just to kind of let you know, like Delia and Michael sat down and had a meal with him. Like you just don't get that at any other football club. And like you say, I think sometimes I know football is a, can be an ugly game, there's an ugly side of the money, but sometimes there's things bigger than money and it's your kind of your ethos and kind of just your whole club in general. Like those those owners will be on the pitch of the first game back at home at Carroll Road singing with their supporters. And like you say, apart from probably Leicester and maybe a couple of others, we're probably the luckiest supporters probably in England, I would say. Yeah, you are. And I have to say, probably one of the most enjoyable experiences in my life is... Um, uh, going over to their place for a meal. I That's my experience. <laughs> and they are brilliant, brilliant company, brilliant hosts. Yes. And what I love about them is that their passion for Norwich is not just simply there. You can just see it with the books on the bookshelves. You can just see it with it. It's almost like every conversation came back to Norwich. You know, <laughs> about politics or, or wine, but it always come back to uh, Norwich and their love for, for Norwich. And look, they're, they're, they're special people as well as special owners. And I, you know, I hope you cherish them. Yeah, we certainly should. Owners as well as fans. And on the topic of fans, everything going to plan, fingers crossed here. Um, we should have a full house come the first day of the Premier League season. Um, last season, without the fans, we saw home advantage disappear a, a little bit. Um, with the fans back, Henry, are you expecting things to return to normal and, and home advantage to become a thing again? It's an interesting question. I talked to uh, Grealish during lockdown um, at Villa and he was on a Zoom and he was saying, obviously he misses the, the whole 10 because, you know, Clout Blue runs through him and his family and he, he he just thrives off that energy coming from the home fans. But he said uh, he also thrives off the abuse coming from the away fans when they're calling him a dive or whatever, something about his hair. Um, 
So I just think having not simply home fans back, but away fans back as well, triggering that on. And I've long been a supporter of the Football Supporters Association's 20 Plenty thing. I do think, look, Norwich, I'm sure you could sell out twice over with with home fans. I mean, I'm, I might be sort of plucking a figure out of thin air there, but whenever I get the impression, I just, whenever I go to Norwich, I see that everyone in the ground is a, is a season ticket holder. But I do think away fans are important. Uh, particularly after the the 18 months that we've had and you know a lack of travel and all that um and i do think if there's one thing that all clubs and what's you know we talk about um uh, michael and delia's benign influence on the club but i also look at them their benign influence on the premier league because these are people with good standards good principles who look after supporters who care about the game as well as their own business as it were and I can see them. I don't know whether they'll go in or someone else from the club will go into Premier League meetings. But I, I think they will come in and, and they will actually stand up for, for, for supporters because they are supporters themselves. And I think one of the things we've got to do is just protect um, and look after away fans more. So absolutely, look, Norwich City home fans, brilliant. But when Norwich City fans go on the road... And I know, you know, you're tra- I mean, the traveling that you will have to do is crazy. And I bet you've already looked at your fixture list and you thought, well, yeah. how are we going to get back from Newcastle in time yeah. for the next day? If that's like a midweek game or whatever, um, scattered all over the place. Um, look, you'd have had that in the, in the in the championship, but it's it's still obviously weren't traveling because of COVID. But it's 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 a huge thing. So whether it is subsidizing the travel. Away fans are so important because I talk to foreign broadcasters and they say, oh, we love the managers, we love the drama, we love the football. But one of the one of the reasons why we do fork out a lot of money is because of the backdrop. And a lot of that backdrop, obviously, the home fans is huge, but actually a lot of it can be triggered by the away fans mm-hmm. as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I look for, I mean, I can remember your fans at um, Anfield. When was it? Two seasons ago, that Friday, yeah. and they were just—they just kept on singing, yeah. and they just, you know, nothing. I think, I think they were probably applauded by the Liverpool fans at the end for, for for the level of support. So, I think the supporting is going to be huge this season, particularly after we saw what the big six tried to do. You know, we got to remind everyone that football is about Norwich City, it's about Kings Lynn Town, as well as Manchester United and Liverpool. Yeah. Absolutely. Just to finish on, Henry, and I appreciate I'm asking you to stick your neck out a bit here, but can you see Norwich City staying in the Premier League this season? <sighs> wow. <laughs> from what you've seen transfer-wise or what you've learned from last season, how do you how do you see it playing out? Yeah, I'm thinking about my next trip to the broads with my cousins and whether, <laughs> and whether they boat they give me is going to be with them <laughs> or whether I'll be keel-hauled. Look, it's it is going to be tough because ultimately you look at where the Premier League table is, and it's almost like the wages table. Yeah. And I don't know what your top wages are. I imagine it's gone up a fair bit. Honestly, I wouldn't have a clue, but it won't be anything like um, you know some of the some of the other teams are going to be at the bottom half of the, the table. But look, you've recruited well. You've got a manager with principles who is totally backed by the board by Stuart Webber. Um, you'll probably have one or two more players. You've got to, I quite like the centre half. Is it the Irish kid, tall Irish kids? I'm over Middle. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Is he Irish? Have I got that right? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. I mean, he, you know, he looks at, he looks a, he looks a prospect. So you've Very got. Prospect. So look, you've got a chance. You've yeah. absolutely got the chance of staying up, particularly if you keep Max Aaron's. I mean, I, I love Catwell's personality. I just there's something I've heard him a couple of times on Talksport, and he always comes over really well. I think you know you're young and you you know and he's got the world at his feet, and he's he will love look, he's playing the Premier League. He he will absolutely love back being there. So if you've got players like that, I hope they stay. If you can keep those players, you've got more strength in depth in goal. You'll miss Skip. You'll miss Brendia. I mean. It will be tough. It'll be one of the stories of the season if you do stay up, but you've definitely got a chance. Agreed. We, I think we're in a better position than we were last time. I feel a bit more confident, even without Wendy, but still, it's a, it's a huge ask. Jacob, you know John, yeah, go. Sorry, you know Henry. what killed you last time, and me looking at it from the outside, is you seem to have injuries in defence and you didn't have enough yeah. cover for them. So when I sort of read the, the EDP uh, and that you're being linked with another defender, and obviously you've got Ben Gibson back fit, I thought, good. Because you, because you need that. Because that's ultimately probably what cost you last time. Yeah. The thing is, thing as well, um, like you were saying about Ben Gibson and you knowing him, 
I think the the interesting point on him was he said um, to the EDP, we are staying up. And I love that mentality that he believes that. Like last time, like I say, when I was talking about lottery winners, probably more talking about they felt like they were ahead of schedule probably by a year. This year, it feels like at least they, they feel like they're ready to go. And, that, and that's the mentality you need, really, isn't it? I guess we saw that with Leeds. Yeah. And just one thing on that. If the manager decides to rest players in the cup, and I know that's a huge frustration because it is, for, for fans, the cup is that chance of glory because Norwich aren't going to compete for the league. But I, I have to say I completely understand him if he does. You know, And you've got, you've got a couple of Carabao Cup ties interspersed between those sort of quite testing first yeah. games, was it Liverpool, City, Leicester and Arsenal. So if he does rest, I just hope that the fans understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think more often than not, he's uh, Daniel Farker himself is quite a cup fan, but I think priority reigns here. And like yeah. you say, those first four, I I don't think you could pick any more, four more difficult games to start off with. So yeah, like you say, I think I think people will understand the squad rotation and getting everyone ready to go. I think I think that's the main part. Like you say, last time we didn't have enough to cover the injuries, so this time it would be brilliant just to have that squad depth to to really challenge and not have a whimper like uh, like last time. Here's a question for you. Would you accept doing a Wigan, winning the cup and going down? Oh, uh, we've had this we had this question a couple of years ago when we got to the quarterfinals. Um, I think you've got to win it. I, that, that, that day, that kind of what Wigan fans always come back with, They, I know they're in a bit of, you know, horrible situation now. Hopefully that improves for them. They will always have that memory. Same with Portsmouth. And I, I, I would personally pick the cup. Mm. I think if as long as we could put up a good scrap against relegation at the same time, as long as it wasn't like last time where we were clearly <laughs> the worst team, as long as we were sort of 18th, 17th, you know, I could take that. That would, that would be a great season, actually. It would be great fun. Um, but, yeah, I think we'll leave it there for now. Henry, genuinely, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's been really good fun. No, my pleasure. And, look, good luck to this season. Uh, I cannot wait to get to Carrow Road and a full Carrow Road. Yes, neither can I. I've been waiting 18 months or so now. It's, it's been a long, old time. Enjoy the game tonight. Let's hope England can bring it home. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. If you could uh, subscribe, leave a comment if you like, click the video a like, that'd be great. Um, but until next time, take care of yourselves and thanks for watching. Cheers. Great stuff.